you you also mentioned you know uh, since this whole thing is about the urdu mushaira uh, uh, i thought i should ask you um, about to to say a little more about the evolution of urdu itself or the idea of urdu so because we know urdu has persian turkish and even uh, arabic terms you know it drops also hindi to, of course hindi uh, and uh, yes so, yeah, in fact uh, shamshur rahman farooqi whom you mentioned may allah grant him health and and speedy recovery as well i mean um, from covid and the any other disease that is suffering from i didn't know about that i'm so sorry to hear about it but he uh, once wrote in his book where he said the very talked about urdu as zaban e urdu e muwalla e shah jahanabad you know the language of the exalted court or city of shah jahanabad that is delhi which was known as shah jahanabad in those days so it was an uh, urdu evolved in a sense right it was known as hindi hindi gujri and, and, you know, dakani urdu is completely different dakani yeah yes and, and then finally dakani, yeah rehta yes rehta so uh, yes exactly absolutely and hindustani uh, it felt i would like to come to hindustani and gandhi's take on uh, take on that because i just remembered when you mentioned uh, uh, hindustani and jamaruddin afghani uh, calling it a linguistic unity between hindus hindus and muslims in india you know the hindustani language itself but gandhi was kind of opposed to that opposed mm. to urdu mm. he sided with hindi but i'll, I'll come well, to he, that he later i would say he's not opposed to urdu actually yeah. in fact um, there's a letter still in firangi mahal in lucknow which was yeah. written by him to molana abdul bari saying um, you know it's signed aapka khadim gandhi and he says gandhi ji Trust says me. that i have started learning urdu it's written in the urdu script uh, yes i have started learning urdu uh, because of your hukum uh, yes so it's not as simple as saying gandhi was against urdu uh, nonetheless you know at the uh, um uh, the, uh, but uh, abdul haq of taraqi or anjuman taraqi urdu mm. was not very happy with gandhi uh, especially no, course, speech and, in nagpur yeah. you remember yeah, mm-hmm. where he sided with um, right uh, said that hindi uh, gandhi said that uh, urdu had a quranic script Uh, it is a religious language for uh, muslim that's why they kind of stick to it uh, but abdul haq uh, was not very happy with that so how, i mean how would you um, uh, uh, i mean understand that and and also if you could say something little uh, to the because for the uninitiated you know they could know something about the evolution of idea of urdu itself from zaban e urdu e mawla e shah janaba to just urdu There's well, so many I think we, in there. I think I think it's uh, you know there's plenty of work being done, and that would be an yeah. entirely different lecture to trace the evolution of yeah. Urdu. I think I would do it as an injustice to try yeah. and sum it up in a few sentences. But of course, the the what we call Urdu um, by the 19th century, as you said, uh, goes through these um, uh, changes as it comes up from the south. You know, the the earlier idea was, of course, it emerges as this language from the so so called mughal court the cantonment or the you know the military yeah. but um of course it has a much more um uh, complicated genesis and and for those of you who are interested you can read shamsur rahman farooqi's essay about this um to the point of gandhi uh, actually so you know he wasn't abdul haq of course does criticize uh, gandhi ji um the only bias maybe um that i found in my research as far as urdu was concerned in gandhi ji was that um shortly before um uh um the 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 wardha scheme which was about nay taleem nay shiksha you know it was a, it was abortive it wasn't ever um um it didn't take off the wardha scheme uh, gandhi ji uh writes a letter to nehru i believe on the 3rd of august um 1937 in which he says that you know uh, of course urdu and 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 hindi are both to be treasured but eventually i hope that devnagri will take over and that is the script in which hindustani will be written because it is more quote unquote scientific that's the word gandhi ji uses in this letter to nehru so yes i mean there there was perhaps some kind of understanding of devnagri which he thought you know by which he thought it was perhaps more rational or scientific um but i wouldn't say i wouldn't you know i wouldn't make the generalization that he's simply against urdu um i think that would be a sort of um i think that idea needs to be interrogated a little bit um and of course you know Mush- nehru himself uh, uh, spoke urdu very well uh, in fact um uh the best thing about my book really uh, uh which i now have the excuse to show you is um the cover 
because yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever is inside is inside. I, I'll try and um, let's see if I can find. I'll try and find a, a image to share on the screen briefly, um, so that uh, uh, you can you can see it more closely. Just give me one second, and I yes. will um, just uh, sorry. Here we go. Okay, so I hope all of you can see my screen. This is the main cover. This is an artist called Shiraz Hussain with whom I worked closely to come up with this image. The artistic genius is his. I provided, I had all these ideas um, and, and really I, I, I'm not uh, trying to sort of joke, but I do believe this is the best part of the book, uh, <laughs> um, uh, regardless of what I say. And you know, he's made this wonderful image of this slightly sort of androgynous figure uh, deliberately so, neither male nor female, slightly female, I would say. But the reason I brought up this image um, is Nehru is here towards the north part of this in head. Uh, and in this, this is actually a real photo from Srinagar, where Nehru is actually officiating over a Mushaira in, in Kashmir. Um, and there are various other famous poets in this picture. Uh, beneath, of course, is the, the Lal Qila. Um, which is still, you know, which is where Prime Minister Modi gives his speeches, which is also, of course, the emblematic of Mughal rule. This is where uh, I heard Rahat Indori give, recite that famous poem, Sabhi ka khun hai shamil yahan ki mitti mein, kisi ke baap ka hindostan thori hai. So, you know, Rahat Indori, under the same jharokas, recited this poem, which became a kind of slogan in the CAA protests. And of course, it's the same Red Fort where the Prime Minister speaks. This is... Hasrat Mohani here. This is Ghalib. Um, these couplets here are from Bahadur Shah Zafar, who is the last Mughal emperor. Um, uh, the, the map of India, of course, the kind of British uh, era map, a colonial map, which uh, of course uh, defines India in a, in a new manner, uh, you know, cartographically. And then of course you come down here and this is a, a miniature painting that I found from the, uh, from the this is the court of the Nawab of Jhajjar. And this is the Nawab of Jhajjar here. And a very interesting figure here. Um, this is someone called Captain Alexander Heatherly, uh, Major, or I forget whether Captain or Major, um, Alexander Heatherly, whose pen name in Urdu was Azad. And he had an entire divan and he was a student of Ghalib, uh, very interestingly. Um, and um, uh, uh, so, uh, you know, th this sort of captures for me this image, and, and this is a court gathering, but, you know, it, uh, this, this is somewhat what a Namushaira would look like uh, in the pre-modern times. Um, and here you can see there's a microphone where Nehru is sitting, so, you know, you, the genesis from this to this. Uh, so, so, so anyway, you gave me an excuse uh, from your with your question. Sorry for the tangent, but I want no, not to... at all, not at all. In fact, you know, the I, I can read the words Mukarrar Irshad there. Yes, Mukarrar right Irshad. Top, right. <laughs> so to recite something I, again. Yes, I, 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 could, I wish I could say that to you to your talk today, Mukarrar Irshad, <laughs> so that we could have uh, talked some more on that. But unfortunately, I think we need to have another meeting on this. Obviously, Ali. Yes. Uh, but uh, that brings me to the other thing. You know, the Hindi Urdu. Um, tussle. Uh, I mean, if you, if I may say that, you know, of course, you as a historian, you know better than me that uh, from the 1830 onwards uh, till 1900, uh, Urdu, in fact, Urdu replaced Persian at the official language of the British administration. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it replaced Persian as the official language in 1830, and that lasted till the till the 1900. For 70 full years, Urdu, yes, course, Urdu, yeah. Urdu was the official language of the British administration. I think not many know that. But actually, it was the introduction of Hindi. It was the Hindi-Urdu politics that actually kind of um, um, changed the whole thing. And then that's where, you know, the politics came in. And that was also the period where the Arya Samaj came up. Yes, the um, the, uh, movement. Exactly. Almost All Muslims the, uh, and the Hindus, yeah. Yes, and then the uh, Hindu Mahasabha. And then we have a guy. Like, 1915. 19, yeah. I mean, it was much later because, uh, uh, but all these things were basically rooted in the Arya Samaj. You know, they wanted to go back to the Vedic Hinduism. Uh, in fact, well, actually, they were also. Arya Samaj was a reformist yeah. movement, of course, yes. which was a rationalizing Absolutely. reformist movement. Um, yes. So I think this is the kind of uh, uh, the uh, context in which 
the idea of mushaira i mean which uh, rightly afghani said that you know it kind of be, it was it was a unifying movement in a sense right it was a unifier it was not a divider in, in that sense but then yet urdu came to be seen as a muslim language urdu came to be seen as a, like gandhi said language written in the arabic script so mm-hmm. therefore it has to be muslim there is some some element of muslimness or islamic nature uh, uh, inherent in that language so and then that's what we are struggling with even today right Uh, that's why you, you see hindi uh, is being if if, if 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 you travel on a plane sometimes i don't understand what they uh, what they're announcing you know <laughs> well, <laughs> the i mean that way, san- sanskritized I mean, in, in that sense of course you know mm-hmm. i mean you know for me going if i was to visit the south of india i would mm-hmm. probably you know um i know a lot of south indian i have a lot of south indian friends who will refuse to speak hindi even if they know it because and of course, yeah, i don't I speak uh, malayalam or tamil yeah. or, mm-hmm. or kannada so it's english right which we yeah. communicate in so i mean that speaks yeah, to a larger the, problem of course the, lingua, about mm, the matter yeah. in which india is a, as a whole is conceived of and what binds yes. it together and so on so uh, at what point in time do you think uh, this language uh, which was a unifier in a sense um, became the divider well i or, think or, or perceived as at least because it, it didn't become we know it didn't become undu still in fact I mean, uh, this day is, uh, you know, fun. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, because K- Kavita wrote interesting book, you know, on the secularism of Urdu. Um, Datla, mm-hmm. Kavita Datla wrote that book. If I remember, on, on Urdu, it was a very interesting book. You know, which talks about Urdu as a secular language. Uh, you know, and yet, you know, today it is being. After all, we are, we are living in a post-truth world, so truth doesn't matter. Only perception matters. So, I mean, what what brought this perception about uh, Ali? In your in your opinion? well i think you know the script of course um and the you know the, for, as i said you know the colonial state is firstly creating these categories through which it sticks labels on communities yeah. on, on 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 various aspects of yeah on language on religious identity and so on and so forth so it's fixing these identities and of course the script um is seen you know this is the same time in which the british also partly uh, you know are uh, Uh, and 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 various orientalists at least are are, are creating and and um, a history of medieval india and writing histories of medieval india in which the muslims are painted as invaders as somehow different um and of course then the script becomes very important and this is where my own work i uh, must say the mushaira is acceptive because you know by because it's an oral space it avoids this entire debate which christopher king writes about one language two scripts um you know uh, about the, the devnagri or nastaliq script um but of course the other anxiety that these communities who are grappling in a sense with how to be modern uh, right i mean this is the main uh, the, whether it's the arya samaj or whether other reform brahmo samaj arya samaj other you know uh deoband uh, which is created in the 19th century nadwa also founded by molana shibli nomani who i write about who is also a poet also founded in the 19th century amongst the muslims these are all movements that are seeking you know they are firstly trying to argue as to what caused decline right and then trying to locate the cause of the decline and then articulate a response to the decline and often you know one group of course of course might argue that this is we have we are morally inferior we are no longer good moral beings and that's why we have lost others will say uh, you know the the rational spirit of inquiry was never welcomed and that's what we must reclaim and so there are all kinds of responses at this time and one of the responses um is to imagine oneself and articulate a new sense of political subjectivity or political selfhood right so the anxieties that are besieging both hindus and muslims are for instance about population numbers right uh, what shibli nomani writes about poems about oh the number of muslims is decreasing the community is in danger of course this very numeric idea of community is fundamentally linked link new ideas of the nation state of a bureaucratic ordered uh, nation state the idea of a census similarly un mukherjee is writing about hindus we are not reproducing quickly enough we are going to be outnumbered by the muslims again these are debates still happening today in india in 2020 
But these were happening in the 19th century and these in a sense accentuated um, differences because they sought to, you know, they were each of these communities was seeking to articulate a sense of political um, uh, selfhood. Um, and of course, uh, the manner in which you do that is to juxtapose, in a sense, modern identity is, is uh, fundamentally pegged to this idea of, of that which we are not, right? I mean, the nation fundamentally excludes a certain category of people, and therefore you contest the idea of the nation and who, who constitutes the nation, right? And this is the contest that is still going on in India today as we speak. So, you know, Urdu in that sense, um, as because of the script primarily, I would say, but also, of course, partly because of the vocabulary, uh, becomes, uh, you know, a Muslim language. Um, so, in fact, in my book, in, in one of the chapters, I talk about um, a, mush uh, a mushaira that was held by a, a Hindu literary organization, um, which wrote up the proceedings of their mushaira. And in, in very ornate Urdu, they speak about why it's important to speak more Hindi. Uh, so, so, you know, uh, so it's very interesting, you know, because, um, and of course, the Kavi Sammelan, which is the Hindi equivalent yeah. of Mushaira, also begins. Uh, and it, again, it's to contest the public sphere, right, of the Mushaira. But what happens with the genius of the Mushaira is that it resists these, you know, until this day, I would say, it resists this, these kind of the, uh, the imposition of any kind of uh, definition, and so much so, uh, and I, I know I'm probably taking up too much time, um, is uh, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, the, the, the BJP's motto in the last national election was, um, I think either Sahi Niyat Asli Vikas, yeah, Asli Niyat Sahi Vikas, I think Sahi yeah, Niyat yeah, you, you write there about how uh, that lady wrote that article. Uh, where said yes, three Irina. words were Urdu and only Irina, one was Hindi. Irina Akbar wrote the article. Irina Akbar, yeah, only Vikas was Hindi there. <laughs> so then, you know, and, and so even the BJP, who is yeah. seeking to be sort of culturally authentic and so on and so forth, yeah. uh, nonetheless is using a vocabulary. And this is, of course, this speaks to us about language in itself. You know, I mean, the yeah. more, uh, I think the fundamental problem that we confront today is this problem of trying to be authentic. You know, that is the real problem that uh, confronts not just Muslims, but communities around the world who are seeking to find uh, consistency and authenticity. I think both of these things are very dangerous. <laughs> um, and wherever you find them, you uh, or anyone who professes to have them, you must uh, retreat politely because I, <laughs> uh, you know, um, I feel that these lead to... Um, uh, in fact, uh, uh, in it, because talking about um, the nation state, you mentioned nation state a couple of times, and you also mentioned uh, uh, Ismail Mirati, the great poet uh, uh, of the 1800s, you know, I mean, uh, in, uh, the, as you know, the idea of the nation or, or the, the two nation theory itself, uh, Muslims were not the originators of that. Actually, for the first time, historians, talk about Bhai Paramanan uh, as having spoken about it for the first time. And, uh, and the Muslims, of course, had a sense of nostalgia. In fact, you speak about the nostalgia of Ismail Mirati in your book. And I would like to quote that particular, a couple of uh, verses from that at least. You know, I have the book in front of me right here. Uh, you know, uh, but this, uh, this is uh, uh, on Qaum, you know, on, on the idea of Qaum itself, where um, Ismail Mirati talks about uh, the, the, his nostalgia, and as you say, uh, he's trying to help people grapple with the loss loss of power in India. You know, we, we Muslims associated the uh, the Mughals with kind of an Islamic power, and the disappearance or the collapse of the Mughal Empire was seen as kind of a loss of power for the Muslims. And of course, they try to conflate Islam and um, uh, the Mughal Empire with an Islamic empire. That's a, that, that's totally problematic. I agree. But then that was the perception in those days. There, uh, you, you, you write here, I mean, you quote the, uh, a long verse from, you know, uh, uh, from Ismail Mirati, you know, I mean, I just pick it up after you just spoke about it. He says, you know, Hai qawm agar baag, to tum uske shajar ho. Because of course, of course, you don't want to quote all the, uh, all the verses, just wanted to use it two, three verses, and then where he, where he says, you know, Hai qawm agar aang, 
तुम नूर नूर बश नूर बसर हो नॉट बशर बसर ही हो दी द बसीरत फ्रॉम बसीरत बेसिकली द इंग्ला आई मीन इनसाइड यस हाय खो मगर चरख तो तुम शमशो कमर हो हाय खो मगर कान तो तुम लालो गुहर हो एंड देन इन द एंड ही सेस मूसा बनो और खौम को जिल्लत से बचाओ गौशाला गफलत की परस्तिश से छुड़ाओ सो इन बिकम मूसा एंड सेव द कॉम फ्रॉम ह्यूमिलिएशन फ्री इट फ्रॉम द वर्शिप ऑफ द स्लोवेनली काउ शेल्टर सो दैट द इमेजरी हियर इज क्लियरली कोट एंड कोट कम्यूनल इन अ सेंस यू नो ऑफकोर्स बट दैट बट दैट इज दैट वाज द टाइम दैट वाज द पीरियड दैट वाज द पीरियड वेयर द कॉन्टेक्स्ट वाज आर्य समाज आई मीन घर वापसी आई मीन द घर वापसी कैंपेन्स और द संगठन मूवमेंट वाज देयर अगेन uh right so that was the that was the context in, in it was spoken we cannot bring it take it out of context and speak uh, and use it in today you know in, in, and speak of it in today's um, uh, context i agree there but then how far did such uh, articulations you know uh, kind of um, drive a wedge or uh, uh, what do you call um, consolidated or even Uh, the uh, the divide you know between the hindus and muslims using the idea of mushaira because mushaira was supposed to be unified after all but right. i mean look so whereas of course you had ideas uh, such as these and there is you know um, the other you know for example i'll read you another um uh, 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 you know um it's a less negative articulation but okay. nonetheless you, you know the idea of the emergence of the muslim uh you know the decline of muslim authority and the the idea of a muslim transnational community that is yeah. under siege you know both of these are addressing the muslim the one you read out and this yes. one kya poochte ho ye ke rasool e arab ki qaum kyun ghat rahi hai aaj adad mein zuhoor mein sun lo wo ganjahaye gara maya dafan hai kuch balkan ki khak mein kuch kanpur mein wow. why do you ask about the arabian prophet's nation why is it decreasing in numbers and power listen those priceless treasures are buried in the ground some in the dust of the balkans others in the dust of kanpur of course the kanpur alluding to the famous 1913 kanpur mosque controversy um so you know this is a new you know i would argue that this idea of the muslim as a political subject is an entirely new phenomenon right um whereas of course even muslims like to imagine a longer sort of teleological history of mm-hmm. of a muslim subjectivity that is stable over centuries um as far as whether you know how divisive it is you know on the other side of course also in um newspapers such as arya or or um uh, uh, and others um you know there were there were allusions to muslims and 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 kind of somewhat derogatory language used what is interesting is that the mushaira even you know resisted the recitation of this kind of poetry there are accounts of you know um, incidents where people recited poetry that was provocative to a certain community and the audience would react you know it acted as a check and also let's not forget um that uh the other you know this was also a time in which there was you know the strict parameters according to um, which muslims sought to define muslim identity were, were also much more blurry or fuzzy you know um so whereas you of course you quoted a particular poem i'll quote this poem to you from zafar ali khan um which begins like this agar krishn ki taleem aam ho jaye to kaam fitnagaron ka tamam ho jaye if krishn's teachings become wonderful place the evils of those who so strife will finish Absolutely and it's not wonderful. just zafar ali khan but of course hasrat mohani who writes ghazals about krishn uh krishn ji and argues that krishn ji might even have been one of the prophets of god yes, and the indeed. and the basuri his flute was his yes. revelation so you know it's the conversation is much more nuanced wonderful. it is much more textured there are times at which when a particular you know um a community or a person feels under siege their re- response to that is maybe particularly shrill but there are other times in which they do try and write more accommodative or harmonious poetry and i think that's the other problem in writing histories of this period 
um, I think the, the, the weight of partition and the burden yeah. of partition is so heavy that we tend to overlook the kind of contradictory, the very, you know, the very diverse contradictory stances that even individuals had uh, leading up to this moment in 1947. Yeah. Um, you know, we are, we are either seeking to justify you know, Pakistani nationalism or Indian nationalism or the Congress party or the Muslim League. And we forget that actually these movements were headed by people who were responding to various points in their lives, various historical events. Um, they themselves changed their stance often. Um, my own grandfather, for instance, went from in the 1940s of espousing an Islamic state uh, and falling out with uh, temporarily with Mr. Jinnah to in the 1960s uh, at, a, at a conference convened by Mountbatten um, to an, analyze a partition saying how wrong he was, you know? So depending on how honest you are with the archive, you will be able to produce a history. And of course, I think the best histories are those that seek to simply um, convey this very uh, textured, nuanced, complicated, often contradictory path that individuals' lives take, um, rather than seeking to fit them into a larger story of outcomes uh, and, and, and goals. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's, that's one of the biggest problems in the historiography in South Asia of partition. We, and, and perhaps, uh, in my very humble opinion, perhaps it is poetry that through which we can, again, resist the hegemony, hege hegemonizing influences of, 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 of nation states. And, uh, and after all, uh, in poetry, mubalagha thoda hota hai in any case, uh, right? So yeah. this kind of uh, exaggeration but, also but, but is uh, Ransa, hyper, I mean, hyperbole. You know, uh, I don't know. I mean, if uh, they, I think there were very few people um, mm. who would have the courage that Maulana Hasrat had of writing, you yes. know, ghazals for Krishanji today. Absolutely. There would be fatwas of kufr yes. <laughs> them, uh, at a yes. speed faster than the speed of light. Uh, Absolutely. Perhaps, so. We need more Hasad Mohanis today, without doubt. Uh, I mean, you know. And I, I think, mean, you know, Nisa. sadly, he's an unknown figure. Actually, you know, very little work has been done on him. And I think he's emblematic, actually. Yes. He's been ignored by historiography, but he's one of these figures, you know, he's very close to Tilak the Garmdal of yes. the Congress party. Mm. He's very close to, uh, you know, he's in the Muslim League. He's a founder of the Communist Party. He's, a, you know, there's a joke. Um, someone asked him, Maulana, you know, you being communism. Or you're a Muslim, and you're a prayer, 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 you How are you a communist? So he said, in response to this, mm -hmm. kar rahe hai, ye log la par hai, aage uh, Of course, the Shahada <laughs> beginning with La ilaha so yeah. illallah. They're, the, they're at the stage of La, they're at the stage of saying no, and they will yes, eventually yes. come. So, you know, these are people who are tremendously sophisticated, who yes. resisted any kind of categorization. And, I, I, and sadly, you know, they are no longer known, uh, uh, particularly amongst, uh, you know, the young uh, Community population in India as uh, very important figures. Um, Indeed.